The Agency by Leah Romeo. Characters, Ani, an aspiring actress. Duck, Ani's boyfriend, a music snob. Jenica, Ani's employer, a boss bitch. Gail, Ani's client, a high school math teacher. Camo Gray, Ani's client, an international pop star. Kelly, Ani's mom, a Midwestern farmer. Setting, New York, capital of the world, city that never sleeps. Time, a few years from now. Scene one, a cafe in Midtown Manhattan. It's generally pleasant, airy, plant-filled, white-walled, a little oasis away from the noise and grime of the city. Ani and Jenica sit at a table. Gail enters. Jenica stands and embraces her. Gail goes in for a kiss and Jenica pulls back. Sorry, sorry. No problem. It's just you, you really look like you look good too. It's great to see you again. Great to see you too. It's, it, it's been a long time. Almost a year, right? 11 months. I've missed you. I've missed you too. Wow, you, you really do look... Uh, you sound a little different though. You, your voice is it, deeper. Is it? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's more like it. Good. Say hi to your mom, Letitia. Hi, mom. Hi, sweetheart. How have you been? Oh, oh, okay. You look good. Well, I've, I've lost a little weight now that your mom's not tempting me with her cooking. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's a great cook. You remember that spicy beef curry? Yeah, that was so good. I I've tried to make it, but I can never get the flavors right. Th there must be some kind of secret. Lemongrass. Really? Yeah, you can get it at specialty markets. Oh, wow. It and, and those cheesy stuffed peppers. Oh, yeah, those were great. And those, um, those chocolate chip cookies. She never made chocolate chip cookies. I'm gluten free. <laughs> oh, right. You can make them without gluten, though. You can make them with almond flour. Well, she didn't. How's, um, how's work? How are your students? Oh, you don't, um, you, you, you wouldn't care about that. You're my mom. I care about everything. You no, you don't. Okay. Um, how's everything else? Have you seen anything good on TV? I don't really watch TV. I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't think this is going to work. I mean, you, you're great, but, but she, she, she isn't. I pretty close. I mean, from what you sent me, we ran the pictures through our system and she was over 95%. I mean, maybe she's close, but she's, she's just not right. She, she smiles too much and, and her hair is clean and it doesn't smell like cigarettes. You want her to have dirty hair and smell like cigarettes? I want her back. That's how she was. I just, I, I want her back. You were supposed to watch the videos. Did you not watch the videos? I'm sorry, it's just, it was really last minute. What do you do when you get an audition really last minute? Do you just walk in there completely unprepared? No, of course not, but this- This, this isn't like waiting tables. This isn't the kind of job where you can just show up and phone it in. I know. Our process is incredibly selective. We take one out of 19 people who apply. Okay, uh, you, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go. Look, 
I'm so sorry. This is her first assignment. She was such a good face match, so I figured we'd try her, but she's clearly not ready to be. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, Mom, fuck you. You turned your back on me once and now you wanna do it again? You have a second chance to make things right and you're not even going to take it. Well, you know what? I don't need you either. So you can walk out of here and see if I give a shit or you can come back and talk to me and we can try and make things a little better. Does anyone have a fucking cigarette? Scene two, Ani and her boyfriend, Duck, at home. So, I got a job. Hey, what's the play? It's not a play. Commercial? Nope. Web series? Nope. TV series? No. Feature film? No. It's, it's with an agency. Oh, it's a temp job? I'm kind of hoping it'll be long term. Sorry, that's great. I just thought you meant an acting job. It's acting. It's acting adjacent. You mean a rental agency? Yeah. Hey. It's really good money. Okay, but I mean, isn't that kind of like being an escort? No, they have really strict rules. Nothing but hugging. You're not even supposed to go to a client's house. But like an emotional escort. Like you have to pretend to be in love with people. I pretend to be in love with people on stage. But that's different. Why? That's art. This is socially awkward people who have to pay for human connection. No, I thought that too, but that's not really how it works. Okay, so how does it work? A lot of the clients have lost somebody. Like this woman today, her wife died and her daughter. This woman today? You've already had an assignment? It was, no, it was like a tryout. I applied a while ago. You didn't tell me that. Yeah, I mean, I was embarrassed, I guess. I thought the same thing you do, that it was weird. So why did you do it? I needed the money. I've gone through almost everything I had saved up before we came, and it's not like my parents are going to cover my half of the rent. You, you don't have to throw it in my face that my parents want to help. I think it's great that they want to help. I wish my parents wanted to help, but anyway, they hadn't called me, but I guess I was in their files, and this woman sent some photos, and I was a really good face match. So you were playing her dead wife? No, no, I was playing her daughter. She's not dead, but they're out of touch. The daughter ran off to San Francisco while the wife was sick and my client got mad. She thought she shouldn't have done that. Well, well yeah, it sounds like she shouldn't. Maybe not, but she was under a lot of stress and maybe she just couldn't take it. Or maybe she just wanted a different life, a better life than she had at home. And anyway, they got in a fight, and it sounds like my client said some really hurtful things. So now her daughter won't talk to her anymore. So, was that weird for you? What? I mean, playing someone who's so much like... So much like what? Uh, I'm an actor, Duck. Yeah, I, I, I know. It isn't a bad thing if I have a personal connection to what I'm... It's a good thing. It means I'm able to really- Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, so? So, it was actually really cool. I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. I thought she just wanted someone to smile and ask how her day was, but it wasn't like that. She really wanted to feel like she was there with her daughter again. But you're not her daughter. I'm not Cleopatra either, but I made you believe that I was. You were amazing as Cleopatra, babe. So maybe I'll be amazing at this too. Of course you will, because you're an incredible actress. But I just feel like once we start paying people to have relationships with us. But it's not like this is a replacement for actually having, it's a way to deal with loss. It, it seems like more of a way to not deal with loss. Yeah, well, loss sucks. 
Of course it does, but. Besides, it gives people a chance to practice, to try to figure out what went wrong. I read this article about a woman who'd reconnected with her brother after she'd hired a rental for a while. They hadn't talked in almost 20 years. Oh. It's kind of like therapy. Yeah, except therapists train for years. It's not like I haven't trained. I've done a lot of improv. But babe, you moved here to be on stage. I oh, no, I'm not giving up on that. It's flexible hours, so I'll still have time to audition. One of their rentals is on Broadway right now. He's doing the musical version of Atlas Shrugged. It, it just feels... What? I, I don't know, weird. How about this? If it makes you feel better, I won't do girlfriends or wives. I'll just do daughters and sisters and friends and stuff. I won't do romantic assignments. Scene three, Ani and Jenica in the agency office. Ani is signing paperwork. And you know most of the work's going to be romantic assignments. Oh, yeah, I don't want to do those. What? My boyfriend, he's not super comfortable with- Oh yeah, no, that's not going to work. But it says right here we can choose. We have the right to turn down anything that we don't work. But if I'm going to hire you on, I need to know you're not going to reject an entire category. There's plenty of other work I can do, isn't there? For someone your age? Not really. We get a lot of calls from mothers, but you're too young for that. There are plenty of short-term gigs, wedding guests, friends for girls trips or bachelorette parties, but the long-term contracts, the ones that really pay, are wives and girlfriends. What about daughters though, like the one the other day? Those are rare. But you need me for that assignment, right? You think I can't scout another girl who's a face match? You happen to be the closest one in our files. But give me a couple weeks and I'll find someone else, no problem. But she wants to see me again. She said she did. She wants to see her daughter again. It doesn't matter if that's you or someone else. The first thing you learn in this business is that people are replaceable. That's pretty much literally the point. I'm sorry, I just, I promised my boyfriend. What does your boyfriend do? Is he an actor? He's a musician. Oh, let me guess. Your high school sweethearts, the two artsiest kids in your senior class, moved out here together from some cow shit town in Indiana. Ohio. Wanting to make it big and buy a brownstone and raise some little bohemian babies. Am I right? So let me tell you something else I'm right about. You and your boyfriend, it's not going to last. What do you, why do you think that? If you don't take the job because he doesn't like it, you're going to resent him and you're going to break up eventually. If you do take the job, even though he doesn't like it, he's going to resent you and you're going to break up eventually. So if you're going to break up either way, you might as well take the job and make some money. We're not going to break up. We've been together for almost seven years. That's all the more reason. You had the same dream to move to the city, but now you're here. So now you're going to have different dreams, and those dreams are going to take you in different directions. You don't know me. I know your type. I know everyone's type. That's why I'm good at my job. Anyway, I don't have all day, so what's it going to be? Are you going to sign, or are you going to walk away? Why don't you tell me? If you know me so well, why don't you just tell me what I'm going to do? You're going to walk away. You're going to go home to your boyfriend and make some dinner and have some cheap Merlot and some nice missionary style sex. No, I'm going to sign. Great. Scene four, the cafe. Ani sits at the table. Jenica enters wearing a white dress and holding a bouquet. Hi, sorry, I'm coming from a wedding. Oh, were you the bride? Yeah, the groom's gay, but he doesn't want to tell his 85-year-old mother. So we did a little thing at City Hall. It was sweet. She takes off the dress. Under it, she's wearing a skirt and a tank top. Throughout the following, she finds a cardigan in her bag, pins up her hair, exchanges her heels for flats. Did you watch the videos this time? Yeah. It's been three days since I washed my hair, and I smoked two cigarettes on the walk from the subway. Well, 
I actually only smoked one, but I lit the second one and waved it around a lot. So she sent in the contract. She wants to do weekly visits. She signed up for the basic package, so each visit is up to an hour. It might be shorter, but if it goes any longer, we make up a reason we have to go. Okay. So your per visit rate is going to be 500. $500? Is that a problem? That's the opposite of a problem. Good. She might want to see you alone sometimes. I'm sure you figured this out, but yours is the complicated part here. I'm dead. It's sad. But it's not like she and I have a lot of unresolved shit. Yeah. So she might want to spend some extra time with you, which is fine, but she has to set it up through the office and you only meet her in public places. I like it here because the owners know me. So whatever I order ends up on our tab and then we can bill it out. But some people like to go shopping, go for bike rides or for walks. Bars are okay, but no more than two drinks while you're working. Sure. You don't pay for anything. She buys whatever you eat or drink. If she takes you shopping for clothes, she pays for them. Okay. And she covers transportation. So don't take the subway next time. Take a car. Oh, really? I've never actually taken a car. I don't even have the app. You're kidding. I didn't want to be tempted if I was drunk or out late or something. What? You've never been broke before? I've been doing this for a long time. Is she? What? I mean, she's a high school teacher, so she's probably not rich, right? She might have had wealthy parents, or the wife might have left her some life insurance. Yeah, I guess. But this is a lot of money. You're giving her the chance to spend time with her daughter again. You can't put a price on that. Yeah, no, it just seems... What? I once climbed onto the subway tracks to get a bag of groceries. What? You asked if I had ever been broke. I was doing this show in this basement theater in Harlem, and there was a cheap bodega nearby, so I stopped there sometimes to pick up some things on my way home. And I was waiting for the train one night, and the handle of my bag ripped, and the bag fell down onto the tracks. There was a sack of rice, I remember, and some ground beef, some beans. And it was the only way I was going to eat for the next week. So I just... Hi, honey. Hi. They embrace. How are you doing? I I'm doing okay. You know what? I I'm actually doing better. I've been looking forward to seeing you two all week. Me too. Hi, Letitia. Letitia, say hi to your mom. Whatever. Good. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Letitia, no need to be rude. I just don't see why we have to do these awkward visits where we sit in a coffee shop and pretend to be nice to each other. Would you rather do something else? Yeah, sure. Let's smoke weed. Let's all go to the park and smoke a bowl together. Letitia, I'm sorry, honey. I don't know why she's- No, it, no, it's it's okay. It's it's good. <laughs> if if you if you want to um smoke some marijuana, Letitia, you you can do that. No, you can't. We don't do that. Okay, well, we could go to the park. It's so whatever. It's not about the park. Then what's it about? You tell me. What are we doing? We're spending some time together. I, I just, I wanted to spend time. Why? Because I miss you. I, I thought, um... This is probably dumb. What? I thought maybe we could play Uno. Uno. I think that's a great idea. You used to love Uno when you were a little girl. Well, you know what, Mom? I'm not a little girl. 
And I'm also not mentally challenged, which I'd have to be to want to put. You are going too far. I just, I don't really get it. You basically think I'm a terrible person, right? Uh, no, uh, no, I, I don't think that. You actually do, though. The things you said. I, I was mad. When, when you left, I, I said some things I shouldn't. I, I, I don't think you should have left right then. But maybe I felt like I had to. And maybe I didn't deserve to have you make me feel awful. I, I didn't mean to make you feel awful. Well, you did. And now I'm trying to figure things out on my own and it's hard. And I don't have a mom I can talk to when I have a shitty day. Or a mom I can come home and hug at Christmas. Or a mom I can ask how to get candle wax stains out of jeans or any of the other things moms know how to do and nobody else does. A mom is supposed to be the one you can call whenever you can't call anyone else and I need that and you took it away from me. I'm sorry. That's... Can I, can I hug you? I don't know. Please? Ani doesn't move. Gail approaches. She hugs Ani. Ani stiffens for a moment, then hugs her back. This is... This is great. This is really great. Same time next week. Scene five, Ani and Jenica at the office, later. You like to push boundaries, don't you? Was it, did I go too far? I thought that was going to be a disaster. With a different rental, it probably would have been. What's your relationship like with your parents? What? Do you get along? Do they support you? Um, I don't mean financially. If they did, you wouldn't be doing this. I mean, how do they feel about it? Their little girl, hundreds of miles from home, trying to be an actor of all the impractical things. Great. Yeah? Yeah. That's good. That's lucky. <laughs> My mom was an immigrant, ran a nail salon for 40 years. So when I told her I wanted to act, <laughs> you can't imagine. Or maybe you can. I can't. Well, like I said, that's lucky. I was supposed to have a nice middle-class life as an IT tech or something. Did she ever get over it? No, but I think she would have if she could have seen what I've done, all this. I think she would have been proud. Oh, is she, did she? Emphysema. I'm sorry. Can't prove it, of course but I think all those fumes. Anyway, <laughs> that's great that your parents- It uh, is great. You go back home much? Um, yeah, I haven't, but that's just cause I've been really broke. I'm planning to now that I'm making some money. Speaking of making some money, there is something I want to talk to you about. Yeah? I have a special assignment. Special how? high profile client, lots of publicity if it goes well. The girl who was contracted for it just booked the touring production of Cujo. I'd normally never give this to someone new, but I'm in a bind. I can do it. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure I can do it. Camo Gray. What? Why would Camo Gray want a rental? Same reason anyone else does. He's got a broken heart. But he could get any girl he wants. He doesn't want any girl. He wants a very specific girl, and he can't have her. Helica Castro. I'm supposed to play Helica Castro? I don't look anything like her. I ran you through the system. You're an 83% face match. Julissa was closer, but she's spending the next six months trying to keep from getting eaten by a rabid puppet. So if we wig you and spray paint on some abs, I think you'll be close enough. But she's, 
I mean, she's a star. You don't think you could be a star? I do. I do. Good, because he wants someone to start this weekend. You'll be on the basic contract, hour-long visits once a week. Wow. Okay. Normally, visits are always in public, but we can't exactly have you strolling hand-in-hand hand with Camo Gray through Central Park. So you'll see him at his apartment. No. Oh. But I mean, that doesn't mean I have to... <sighs> no, of course not. I'm not running a brothel. So do I just show up at his place? His driver will pick you up here Friday morning at 10. I'll send you the file tonight so you can go over everything. Okay. This could be really good for you. If you do it right. I, yeah, I'll try. You'll try? I'll do it. I'll do it right. It'll be amazing. Scene six. Ani and Duck at home, cleaning up from dinner. So this guy's like, yeah, we're all booked up for the next six months. We have an opening after that, at like 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. And I'm like, what if a young Bob Dylan walked in here? You tell him to come back in six months at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. And the guy's like, who? And it's clear that he's a moron. So I'm like, fine, just give me the slot. And he's like, I can't give you the slot. To get that slot, you have to come back and audition. And the next slot for that is at 6.45 Friday night. And I'm like, dude, it took me over an hour on the train to get here. Can't I just do the audition now? What did he say? He said no. So I left. You didn't sign up to audition? No, I mean... Fuck it. I don't need the gig that bad. Don't you? You're not being very supportive. I'm sorry. I mean, I want to be, it just seems like you're turning down opportunities. I'm not turning them down. I'm just not bending over backwards to get them. But maybe you have to. Maybe that's what you have to. It shouldn't be. Maybe not. But what if it is? I'm good. I'm really good. I know. And sooner or later, somebody's going to see that. Yeah. It's just, wouldn't you rather sooner instead of later? Sure. So then I think you should do the audition. I mean, we've been here six months and you've only had a couple of gigs. It's not like you've gotten any more work than I have. No, I know. But I'm taking auditions. When was the last time you took an audition? Well... Not in the past few weeks, but I've been so busy. But before that, I was out there trying, going to open calls every day. You think I'm not out there trying? It seems like you're just expecting it to happen. If I don't expect it to happen, then how is it supposed to happen? You have to believe in yourself to manifest. Remember that book? We read that whole book about it. Yeah. I believe in myself and I believe that I'm better than that kind of bullshit. Yeah, okay. Anyway, how was your day? It was good. It was, yeah. It was actually really good. I think they really like me. Yeah? They gave me this special assignment. Oh, what is it? I can't really say. Babe. It's super confidential. Yeah, but you can tell me. I really can't. It's nice, though, after months of being rejected. You mean like me? No, that's not what I... No, this isn't about you. This is about me, about me doing well at work. I'm happy you're doing well at work. Good, because you should be. Good, because I am. You know I'm your biggest fan, babe. Yeah, yeah, I know. What do you think about Camo Gray? What? Like, as a musician. <laughs> Camo Gray is not a musician. He's like, he's like the mutant love child of a bodybuilder and an auto-tune machine. That's harsh. You're not going to try and drag me to his concert or something. No. I just, I heard that he had a new album, and I wondered what people were saying about it in music circles. No, people aren't talking about it in music circles. People don't talk about Camo Gray in music circles. Okay. You're not, like, actually into his music, are you? No, not, not really. 
Because I feel like that's something I should have known before we committed to spending our lives together. We haven't committed to spending our lives together. Well, no, but we're going to. Unless I like camo gray, apparently. Yeah, that would uh, pretty much be a deal breaker. You're such a snob. That's why you love me. Well, is it? Yeah, I mean, part of the reason. I have good taste. I don't just like things because they're popular. But do you hate them because they're popular? Because I'm not sure that's actually better. I hate them because they're terrible. Camo Gray is objectively terrible. What's so terrible about him? Everything. No, really, explain it to me. I mean, I can't like analyze his music. I don't even know his music. You do just hate him because he's popular. I don't have to know his music to know it's crap. Oh my God, that's not, he's not your special secret assignment. No. That wouldn't make any sense. I mean, why would Camo Gray want a rental? <sighs> yeah, no, I, I guess he wouldn't. Unless he wanted somebody to play... Uh, who was that actress he used to date? Helica Castro? Yeah, but you're, you, you don't look anything like her. You don't think so? No, she's, she's so fake. She's like a human Barbie doll. I think she's pretty. Really? With all that makeup and weird stuff she has in her hair? I mean, she has a distinctive style, but there's nothing wrong with that. They finished with the dishes. <sighs> oh, I'm exhausted. You want to smoke a joint and go to bed? You go ahead. I'm going to stay up for a little bit and read or something. Duck takes a joint out of his pocket and makes it dance in front of her nose. You sure? <laughs> yeah. I'll be in in a few minutes. Duck goes into the bedroom. Ani takes out a tablet and types. A video of Helica Castro begins to play. Ani imitates her facial expressions, pauses the video, rewinds, does it again. Scene seven, Camo Gray's apartment. Camo is lounging. A knock on the door and Ani enters. She's wearing a wig, a midriff shirt, and funky makeup. She's nervous. Camo stands. Hi. You are gorgeous. Oh. Your skin, it glows. Like there's a lantern inside your skull and your hair, it's like a river. Like your face is floating in a river and your eyes are like fireflies, like two sparkling fireflies. And so are the fireflies in the river? What? And what about the lantern? Is that in the river too? inside my skull. Was it too much? I was worried it'd be too much. It was a lot. I was worried about that. I did it for Brad and he said it was perfect, but he always says everything's perfect. So you rehearsed this? I rehearse everything. That's the only way to get things right. Uh, can we try it again? You go out there and come back in and I'll... Um, sure. Okay. You are gorgeous. That's a good way to start, right? Um. Is it not? You can tell me. I mean, a lot of people are gorgeous, right? Most of them aren't as gorgeous as, um, me, but it's still, it's not unique. Okay. So maybe you want to focus on what's unique about me or about our relationship. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Go out again. You're the only woman in the world I've ever loved. Oh, wow. Okay. How come? <laughs> what do you mean, how come? Well, what is it about me? Your skin, it glows like, like there's a lantern inside your... I don't mean the physical stuff. Like, what is it about my personality? Let me think. What kinds of stuff did we used to talk about? I don't know. Uh, we were both so busy, we didn't have much time to talk. So what did we do? 
We did a lot of red carpets. We were great on red carpets. We knew just how to pose together, how to turn our body so neither of us got that weird thing where your arm looks huge. Okay. And we had a lot of sex. <laughs> really great sex. What else? Uh, we played mini golf one time. That was fun. I guess I just felt like you really understood me. But what did I do that made you feel like that? You nodded a lot. And whenever I said stuff, you'd usually be like, yeah, I get that. Do you think you really knew me very well? Your favorite color is pink. Your favorite animal is the kookaburra. You have three kookaburras, two teacup pigs, a miniature pony, and a hairless cat. And your favorite candy is Sour Patch Kids. And my favorite singer is Camo Gray. And your favorite book is The Secret. And your favorite thing to do on weekends is cocaine. Okay, so you read my US Weekly profile. But I'm talking about knowing my mind, the kind of things I think about. What kinds of things do you think about? Um, well, I think a lot about acting. Okay. Like when I have a part or an audition. I mean, not that I usually have to audition, but I'll go through my lines and think about each of them. Not just the words, but what I'm using the words to do. And then I'm always looking at people. When I'm waiting for the subway or, or you know, taking my private jet. And sometimes I borrow things. Like this one time I played Ophelia and there was this homeless woman who always sat on a bench at the end of my street and her hand would shake whenever somebody gave her money. She wouldn't say thank you or anything else. She would just shake. And I used that. Every time anyone touched me, I would just... I do that too. Uh, except I listen to people like my grandma when she'd hang up the phone, she'd always say goodbye like that. Goodbye. And it ended up in the chorus of... Uh, goodbye, girl. Goodbye, girl. Not that the song is about my grandma. That'd be weird. <laughs> that would be weird. How come we never talked about stuff like this before? You probably never asked. Should I have? Yeah, probably. It's been a long time since I've had to ask anybody for anything. What else should I have asked you? What else did you want to know? Would you rather be invisible or be able to fly? I'd rather be able to fly. How about you? See, that's what I used to think, but now I feel like being invisible would be kind of amazing. Where would you go if you were invisible? To Walmart. <laughs> no. What? Uh, my grandma used to take me there when I was a kid. She bought these really ugly shoes they sold there, these big, white, clunky sandals. They, that made it so her bunions didn't hurt. And whenever she'd go there uh, to get a new pair, she'd bring me with her. She'd get me an ice cream cone at that counter they have up front, and she'd let me pick out a toy, whatever I wanted. And it seemed so amazing that there were just these aisles and aisles of toys that I could choose from. Sometimes it took me an hour, but she didn't mind. I couldn't wait till I got old enough that I could just go to Walmart on my own. <laughs> I didn't know why grown-ups didn't spend all their time there. So did you go once you were older? Not really. <laughs> By the time I was in high school, Sweetheart was out and it wasn't like I could just go places anymore. Well, you could get them to shut it down so you could just go on your own without people being I know but I just think I just I think I just want to remember how it was with my grandma and if it was just me in this big empty Walmart it wouldn't be yeah you lost your grandma last year right yeah a couple of months before we got together you must miss her a lot. She was the first one who really believed in me. 
I told my mom I wanted to be a singer and she was like, whatever, do your homework. <laughs> I told my grandma and she went and bought me recording equipment. <laughs> she and I spent a whole day stapling egg cartons to the wall of the shed in my backyard so it'd be soundproof. I made the first video for Sweetheart in there. But now everybody believes in you. Now you've got millions of fans who believe in you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Where would you go if you could fly? I don't know if I'd really go anywhere. I mean, before I lived in New York, I would have gone here, but now I think I'd just fly around over the city. That's good. That means you're right where you want to be. I'm right where I want to be. I just want to be higher. I like you. When do I see you again? Next Friday. How about tomorrow? You want to see me tomorrow? Ah. Uh. Okay. You'll have to book it through the office. Oh, uh, Brad handles all of that. Is it, uh, are you paid by the hour? Yeah. I'll tell him to double it, whatever it is. Oh, I mean, you don't have to. I'm happy to come. I'm happy to double it. Yeah. Okay. Scene eight, Ani and Duck, fucking. Yeah? No, sorry. Duck rolls off her. Sorry, it's not, it's not you. I'm just, I'm just a little distracted. Ouch. No, I don't mean it isn't your fault. It sounds like my fault. No, it really isn't. Cause like, on the list of things that are supposed to be pretty engaging, I don't know if it's number one, but it's definitely up there compared to vacuuming or brushing your teeth or eating bananas. I really like bananas. I kind of thought you really liked sex. I do. You know I do. I'm just I'm having a crazy week. At work? Yeah. So tell me about it. I can't. Is this your special secret assignment? Maybe. You already told me about that lady, the one where you play her daughter? I know, but that was before I signed. Jenica's super intense about keeping things confidential. Okay, so you have this weird-ass job that you can't even talk to your boyfriend about. It isn't a weird-ass job. Babe. Hey, it is. Whatever. I just, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to support you if we can't even talk about what you do. I mean, communication is like our thing. Well, maybe something else can be our thing for a little while. Like what? Because apparently sex is off the table. Maybe just like, not talking. You want our thing to be not talking? I'm sorry. I'm just exhausted. I spend all day trying to be what all these people need, and then I come home and I just want to not be what anyone needs for a while. Well, you're definitely not what I need right now. But I want that to be okay. That's not fair. I mean, no, it's probably not. I just feel like this job is taking over your life. You're working all the time. You're not taking auditions. I mean, you moved to New York to be an actor. I'm being an actor. Are you? Yeah. I'm living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. And I'm making a difference for people. I just... I don't want to see you give up on your dream. I'm not giving up on my dream. My dream's evolving. Look, I'm really exhausted and I have to be up early tomorrow. Why do you have to be up early tomorrow? Are you working? Yeah, I got a last minute assignment. But we were supposed to hang out. We hang out every day. Uh, not anymore. We hardly hung out all week and that's why it was supposed to be our day tomorrow. We were supposed to go look for a couch at the Salvation Army. I don't even know if I want a couch from the Salvation Army. I do. Well, then maybe you should go look for one. What if I pick out a couch you hate? What if it's that vintage plaid blazer I bought in high school? Can you imagine if you had to sit on that blazer every day for the rest of your life? Okay, I'm not going to live in this apartment for the rest of my life. You might. You never know. I actually do know. There's no way I'm letting that happen. I didn't realize you had such a problem with our place. I don't have a problem. 
it's fine. It's just old. We like old. You like old. And I pretend to like old because it's all I've ever been able to afford. But I'm making more money now and I might start wanting some stuff that's nicer. Do you want to get a new apartment? No, I mean, maybe. What about a new boyfriend? You want a shiny new boyfriend too? No, that's not. You're overreacting. So you want me to go buy a couch by myself? I mean, sure, if you want to. How am I supposed to get it home by myself on the subway? I don't know, Duck, okay? All I know is I really need to go to bed right now. Yeah. Okay, fine. He gets out of bed and begins dressing. Are you staying up? I'm going out. Steve texted me earlier to see if I wanted to go to the jam at the Hayworth, and I said I'd rather spend some quality time with my girlfriend, but clearly that's not happening, so. Okay. I'll probably just crash at Steve's since he's in Manhattan. Okay. Duck puts on a leather jacket. Have fun. I will. Ani stretches out across the bed and shuts her eyes. Scene nine, Ani and Camo. He reads from a list on his phone. Okay, number four. What's the best thing you've ever eaten? Um, okay, fresh picked strawberries, like straight from the vine. Sounds great. It is great. My family has a, Anyway, how about you? The spaghetti and meatballs from Swift's. The meatballs are like the size of your head and the sauce is so spicy. It's better than sex. Well, not good sex, but it's better than bad sex for sure. Have you been? To Swift's? Yeah, we actually went together. You were wearing an orange hoodie and I was wearing a silver dress. Really? You're good. I didn't even remember that. Okay, uh, here's number five. Would you like to be famous and in what way? I mean, I'm already famous, so. Before you were, uh, did you want to be? Yeah, I was that annoying kid who was always like, look at me in the middle of the grocery store, <laughs> whatever. I once put on a full-on concert in front of this computer repair place. My mom was inside trying to get her computer fixed and I was out front with like 40 old ladies around me doing Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> That's kind of absurdly adorable. My mom didn't think so. She spanked me for being a show off. <laughs> I used to get in trouble for that too. Okay, so that's the perfect lead in to our next question. How do you feel about your relationship with your parents? Great. Yeah? Yeah. Even though they weren't supportive of you. They were supportive. They were. Yeah, they were great. That's like a very personal question. I mean, yeah, it's supposed to be. <laughs> How did you find these questions again? Uh, it's from an old list from the New York Times. It's called 36 Questions to Fall in Love with Anyone. Uh, so even if you start off as strangers, if you go through this list, you'll... You're supposed to end up falling in love. Yeah. Because, like, you tell each other all this personal stuff and then... Yeah. That makes sense, I guess. So I figured we could try them out and see how they work, you know? And then maybe I can try them with you the real you later on. Okay. So, how do you feel about your relationship with your parents? Uh, I mean, my actual parents are kind of shitty, right? <laughs> my dad's never been in the picture and my mom, she never wanted. She had me when she was 17, which I'm sure that was really tough, but I always felt like she mostly just wanted me to be quiet, but then my grandma was super amazing and Brad's like my surrogate dad now, except I pay him a bunch of money. So, you know, <laughs> that's cool. Anyway, uh, number seven, do you have a secret hunch about the way you'll die? 
Um, yeah. I've always been secretly scared of getting pecked to death by seagulls. You're kidding. I know, that's... <laughs> I'm scared of seagulls too. I think they're super creepy. They're super creepy. Their little beady eyes. And their weird feet and that little hook they have at the end of their beaks like they wanted to. Oh. <laughs> I went to the beach in New Hampshire when I was a kid and the seagull flew down and tried to take my ice cream, only I wouldn't let him. He took a big chunk of my finger instead. I still have the scar right here. He takes her hand to look and doesn't let go. Ever since then, I've been so freaked out. I won't even go to the beach. That's too bad. I was about to ask you to come with me next month to Aruba. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm doing a private concert down there. Some rich kid's birthday party. You can make it a little vacation. It'd be fun. Um. You mean me, not me, right? No, I mean you. Not you, Helica. You. Sorry, I don't. Yeah, no, you're not supposed to. I'll tell you mine if you tell me yours. <laughs> what do you mean? It's not camo gray. What? Yeah, no, it's a really big secret. Brad paid one of those search engine firms to scrub it off the internet. Why? It's bad. It's really bad. Whatever you tell me is totally confidential. Really? Yeah, it's in the contract. Let me guess. Brad read the contract. I mean, yeah, he did, but... My lips are officially sealed. Uh, it's... Winston Bergmuller. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. I know. What do you think? Am I still sexy? You're assuming I thought you were sexy before. Did you? Um, I mean, yeah. Everyone does, right? There's literally an entire website called Camo Gray is not sexy dot com. <laughs> really? Just a bunch of awful pictures of my face. Wait, I want to look that up. No, don't. Camo Gray is not. No, seriously, don't. <laughs> they wrestle for her phone. He finally succeeds in grabbing it away. It's your turn. I'm really not supposed to tell you. Neither was I. If you. Tell me, I'll give you your phone back. I'm Ani Fletcher. Ani Fletcher. I like it. She holds out her hand for her phone and he hands it over. So, how would Ani Fletcher feel about taking a trip to Aruba with Winston Bergmuller in a few weeks? Bonnie Fletcher has a boyfriend. Oh, but wow, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty serious. How long have you been together? Seven years. Oh, <laughs> and he doesn't mind that you... Why would he mind? I mean, it's acting. Yeah. We really probably shouldn't... I mean, we can do this however you want, but I think it works better. They say it works better when I stay in character, you know? Okay. Okay, so back to... What kinds of stuff do you do together? Who? You and your boyfriend. Not... I know, I know, but I think this will help. I don't know what people do, what regular people do when they're... I think that's part of why it went bad, you know, with you and me. Okay. Well, um, today we were going to go and buy a couch. Where? Oh, um, I'm not sure. Probably like a fancy furniture store. Okay, uh, what else? We're both really busy. If I'm not at a play or he's not at a gig, we sometimes make dinner together. What do you make? 
We make a lot of borscht. Borscht? Yeah, he really likes borscht. I don't even know what that is. It's like this Russian cabbage, like a soup. Is it good? <laughs> Not really. It's cheap, and we're both vegetarians, so. So, if you weren't here with me, you'd be buying a couch and making borscht? Yeah, I, I guess I probably would. Seven years. That's a long time. Yeah. You don't. What? You don't ever run out of stuff to talk about? It's not that you run out, exactly. You just kind of talk about the same stuff over and over. Sounds. What? Nice. Actually. Comforting. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, it was for a while. Ani leans over and kisses Camo. So was that, uh, was that acting? No. Okay, good. Because if it was, I really should have been an actor. She kisses him again. Scene 11, Ani and Duck, at home. Did you touch your boobs? Duck. Was it over the shirt or under? Duck. Oh God, it was under. I know it was under. Duck, come on, this isn't that big a deal. Who was it? I told you, somebody I work with. You don't, you don't know him. What's his name? Winston. Winston what? Winston Bergmuller. You're cheating on me with someone named Winston Bergmuller. I'm not cheating on you. I just, we kissed, that's all. How do you spell Bergmuller? You're not going to find him online. What? He changed his name. He's not. Oh. So what's his name now? I can't tell you. Why not? I've told you a million times, I have to keep work stuff confidential. Oh my god. Winston Bergmuller is Camo Gray. You kissed Camo Gray? How did you- It's all over the internet. He told me they scrubbed it. You can't scrub something from the internet. I thought that seemed kind of weird. Why did you do that? Camo Gray sucks. He's actually really- What? I don't know. Sweet. Duck punches a pillow. Look, I didn't think you would be so... I mean, we've talked about maybe being poly at some point. Yeah, in a respectful and mutually agreed upon way that doesn't involve a world famous recording artist. Is that why you're really... You're mad because it was him? Of course I'm mad because it was him. But I think if it hadn't been him, then it would have been somebody else. So, what, you've just been waiting for an excuse to- No, of course not, it's just, we've never not been together. When we were kids, we weren't together. We've never been with anyone else. I dated Jolie Masterson in seventh grade for three weeks, and you gave Ben Zeminski a hand job at that freshman year party. Oh god, I forgot about that. So, there you go. You've been with somebody else. You don't have to go out and do it again. He wants me to go to Aruba next month. You don't want to go to Aruba. You hate the beach. Maybe I don't. Maybe I've always just been scared. Ani, okay. We know each other. We have a history. We have an irreplaceable bond. And you don't want to throw that all away. I mean, do you? Do you? Duck takes down a suitcase and starts to pack. Duck, you don't have to- I'm going to stay at Steve's. Okay. I'm taking the vintage concert posters. Okay. Even the Joni Mitchell. Okay. You're just gonna let me do it. I don't really feel like I'm in a position to make demands right now. But you love Joni Mitchell. 
you love Joni Mitchell. That's actually not the same thing. I'm sure you can afford to pay the rent on your own, especially now that you're fucking a superstar. Because I work, unlike you. I work. I work on my art every day. Do you? Because you seem to spend a lot of time smoking weed and complaining about how the world hasn't figured out that you're a genius. Duck tries to slam the suitcase shut, but the posters are too big. He tries again and again. Don't. You'll break it. You think I give a shit? You already broke everything. You broke us. You broke everything. Duck throws on his leather jacket and exits, leaving the suitcase behind him. Scene 12. Ani, Gail, and Jenica playing cards. Seven. Yellow. Oh. Oh. Uno. No. Bam. <laughs> so close. Suck my dick. Letitia. <laughs> okay. So you're right. It's kind of fun. You couldn't get enough when you were little. Do you remember? We'd play one round and she would be banging on the table with her little hands. Again! Again! What else did I like to do when I was little? What was I like? Oh, you were trouble. <laughs> but, but you were a lot of fun. You had these snappy green eyes and curly hair and you were always climbing things. You remember when we were having dinner outside at that pasta place? Oh yeah, and she climbed the trellis. The whole thing came crashing down, flowers and vines all over all the people on the patio trying to have dinner. We could never go back, which was too bad because they really did have a nice uh, lemon Alfredo. You know, you wanted to know how everything worked. And you'd get so mad when I couldn't tell you. Look it up, you'd say. Only you couldn't say else. Look it up. And I would. And then I'd be stuck trying to explain quantum mechanics or molecular biology to a four-year-old. But you'd nod and you'd listen with this serious little frown. And then you'd be off and running again trying to climb up on the counter and take all the dishes out of the cupboard. You wanted to do it all, to understand it all. You were always biting everything. It sounds, it sounds like you really loved me. Like you really love me a lot. You know, um, I was thinking Maybe I ought to call you this week. Oh, okay. I can give you my number. I think that's a great idea. It's 50 for anything up to 15 minutes. Some people do it every day to say goodnight. No, I mean, maybe I ought to call you this week. Oh. You know, honey, I'm not sure that would be... You don't think so? I just... I wouldn't want to see you disappointed. But maybe I wouldn't be. I mean, look, she's right here. Our beautiful daughter. If you were to call and it didn't... This might not work anymore. But why do you think it wouldn't work? I've seen work this thing before. When somebody starts having meetings with us, it usually means they know on some level. I mean, after the things you said and the things she said. Yeah. So you think, you, you think she, she wouldn't want I think to. She's here. And I, I think that's really lucky. You want to play again, Mom? No. No, I, I, I don't think so. 
You want another coffee or some cake? I'd share a piece. No, I'm, I'm all, all right. What do you want to, you want to just talk? We're actually out of time, but we can keep going if you want to sign up for- No, no, uh, that, that's okay. I, I, I mean, I, I'd like to, but I'm, they cut the after school program, so I'm not making as much this semester and- Maybe just 15 minutes? I can't. I really can't. But we'll see you next week, right? Yeah. Bye, Mom. Bye, sweetheart. Can I? Yeah, I'd like that. He hugs Gail for a long moment. O okay. See you next week. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll see you next week. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just feel. What? I mean, what if she would be able to reconnect? She wouldn't. What if she would? I've seen this before, what, where people think they can practice with one of us and then go back and work things out with the person we're playing. Yeah, I mean, isn't that part of the point? It's part of the marketing. There was that article with that woman saying how it helped her with her brother. You know who that woman was? She was a rental. What? Sometimes I hire my own employees to talk to reporters and play clients. That's... Look, these relationships break for a reason. And I hate to say it, but they're usually better off broken. But shouldn't we at least encourage her to try? Let's say she does. Let's say she calls her daughter and she's screaming at her or cursing her out or telling, sure, telling her she never wants to see her again. You think she's going to be able to come back here and laugh and joke around with you and believe it? It's going to ruin the only good thing she's got left. So she's just supposed to keep on paying us forever. The long-term clients are really what keep us going. There's one guy who's been renting me for almost 15 years now. But what about Letitia? We're talking, we're taking away her chance to reconnect with her mom. We're not taking away her chance. She could pick up the phone if she wanted. But maybe she's scared. Maybe she feels like she can't- Well, that's her problem, not ours. I just, I want to help people. You are helping people. You're taking people who are in pain and making them feel better. You're not helping everyone, but that's impossible. You're helping the ones you can. Helping the ones who can pay for it. Sure, but there's nothing wrong with getting paid to do something good. Look, Ani, you're good at this work. Your short-term gigs have gone well, and you're getting great feedback from Gail and Camo. But if I'm going to keep you on staff, I need to know you're on board. Yeah, I am. Good. Speaking of Camo, there's, um, there's something I want to ask you. Okay. He wants to take uh, he wants me to take a trip with him to Aruba. Really? Yeah, just for a weekend. He's playing a private concert down there. He thought it'd be fun. Well, that's great. Tell him he'll ha to have his people book it through the office. The rate for weekend trips is 3500 but he's paying you double, right? Yeah. So that'll be 7000 Fantastic. <laughs> Good work. Thanks. Are you fucking him? What? It happens a lot. Does it? So you are. No. Because if I asked you and you lied to me about it. I'm not. I'm definitely not. We get along well, that's all. Scene 13. Ani and Camo. Fucking. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. Wow. Right? I didn't even know it could be like that. 
Not that I have a lot to compare it to. What do you mean? Duck, my ex, was the only one I'd have been with before. Really? We got together when I was 16, so. What about you? What about me? How many girls have you been with? Okay, okay. How many girls have you been with this year? Okay, how many girls have you been with this month? You slept with more than 20 girls before we started. Um. You slept with more than 20 girls after we started. Did you, uh, did you think we weren't? I mean, I don't know. I know we hadn't talked about it, but we went to Aruba last weekend. I know, and it was amazing. <laughs> I kind of thought that meant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you misunderstood. I mean, it's only been like a month. It's fine if we're not exclusive, but I guess I didn't think you were out fucking half of New York City. There are a lot of people in New York City, even if I'd slept with a hundred women since we first. Have you? No. <laughs> Okay, never mind. I don't actually want to know. Can I tell you something crazy? Yeah. Helico was the first one I'd ever... Really? But you're like... An international sex symbol? I know. I mean, I have like this whole closet full of women's underwear at my house in Nashville. What? Uh, no, not for me. <laughs> They throw them at my concerts. And you keep them? It's not like a sexual thing. I just, I like to go in there because like there's all these beautiful colors and the lace is so pretty and fancy. It makes me feel like everything's fine. Like if people are making these delicate little things, then everything's fine, you know? Um. Anyway, so it's not like I couldn't have been, uh, but Sweetheart came out when I was like 14 and then for, I don't know, years, I was just like this crazy, I never really had time to think about that stuff. And when I was with Helica, Brad set the whole thing up, he figured my fans would like it and they did and I did too. When it ended, she was, I thought I had to get her back. I thought I'd never feel that way again, you know? But then I met you and I realized, I realized there was someone else who could make me feel like that. And if there was someone else who could make me feel like that, there were probably lots of people who could make me feel like that, which is actually awesome, right? So thank you. I broke up with my boyfriend. You said that wasn't because of me. It wasn't, but I still, I felt like we had something. We do have something. I mean something good, special. You have something special. But I mean something you didn't have with anyone else. You know what, I, I have to go. Oh wait, no, Ani, it's only been like 20 minutes. I don't care, I can't. I have to go. But that isn't cool. I booked you for an hour. Ani is getting dressed. That isn't cool. I paid for you for an hour. Scene 14. Ani and Jenica in the office. You know, I thought you were smarter than that. I, yeah, I thought so too. To fall for a pop star? He's really... Of course he is. It's his job. Yeah. Just like it's your job to keep things professional, to walk the line, to make him think you care about him, but to be... I know. I'm sorry. I know you're disappointed. I'm disappointed too. I thought it was going to be... I really thought you were smarter than that. This was a huge account. No. But I think I can make it up. I really think I can be, 
I mean, I know I screwed this one up, but if you could just give me another chance, I really, I really need, my expenses have gone up a lot now that I'm living on my own. That's not my problem. I know, I know it's not, but I just. You, you ought to be fired. Am I? Well, you would be, except I got a morning, I got a call this morning. From who? Someone who asked for you specifically. Wouldn't even try anyone else. You mean Gail? No. His name is Duck Adelsworth. What? He wants you to play his ex-girlfriend. Oh. No, I, I can't. I thought you needed this job. I do. I really do, but... This is a big contract. Four hours a week for three months. And that's just to start. He wants an option to renew. How does he... Jack doesn't have that kind of money, unless he's getting it from his parents. He said he just signed a major record deal. What? It definitely doesn't make up for losing Camo Gray, but it's something. I just... I can't with Duck. I know him. I figured. He's my... I don't want to know. Okay, but it's just that... I'm not I, your therapist. I know, but I... I re I'm not your mom. I'm just... I'm going through a really hard time right now. I can see that. But you know what? It's not my job to talk to you about it. It's not my job to listen to you cry or to help you feel better. It's my job to make sure my clients are happy. Yeah. So are you going to help me do that job or not? Scene 15. Ani at the cafe with a cup of coffee. She's been waiting a while. Hi. Hi. Sorry I'm late. I had a meeting that ran over and I... No, that's... that's okay. You look great. Do you mean that, or are you just no, playing? No, no. You actually really... I like that sweater. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's it's new. Where'd you find it? Goodwill? No, it's actually new. Oh. But what about the fashion industrial complex? I just... I've been taking a lot of meetings, and I needed a few things. So my manager told me about this new store at Candide. I know Candide, or I know of Candide, I've never. It's it's nice, because they make this stuff that looks vintage, which is, that's my thing, my brand, but you don't have to spend all this time looking in secondhand stores. Well, it looks really good. You look really good. Thanks. You do too. I was trying to decide what it'd be like to see you again. What's it like? You remember in high school how I used to get those headaches? And sometimes they last for like four or five days. Seeing me again is like getting a headache for four or five days. No, no, that's not. There'd, there'd always be a morning when I'd wake up and I wouldn't have a headache anymore. But sometimes I wouldn't even realize it at first because things were just back to normal. Things were just back to the way they were supposed to be. You want a coffee? Uh, no, no, I'm good. I, I can pay you back for yours, though. I know I'm supposed to pay for whatever you get when no, we're... No, that's... No, I, I really... The agency has an account here. They'll bill you. Oh. Okay. So... Camo doesn't mind that you're... No, no. He's not... We're not. Really? Yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't last very long. All the industry people are saying he's over anyhow. That overproduced kind of sound. They're, they're looking for people now who feel really authentic. Simple. Old school. People like you. So, tell me about this amazing record deal. Yeah, it's, it's with McMaster. That's crazy. How did that happen? Well, 
after you left, I started playing a lot of gigs, just little stuff, open mic nights, whatever. What you said to me, it was harsh. I'm sorry. So I wanted to step it up. And I didn't mind running all over the city. I mean, what else was I going to do? So at one of these things, the girl who played after me was the niece of this big McMaster exec. So he was there and he caught the end of my set. And that was it. Next day he brought me in. Wow. I've been spending a lot of time in the studio. The album won't be out for a while, but we're releasing a single next month. Is it one of the ones I know? Uh, no, it's new. It's called You Broke My Heart, You Bitch. You want to hear a little? I have my guitar. Um, maybe later. I'm pretty excited about it. Look at some of my best work. It comes from this really raw place, you know? And I think people are going to respond to that. Yeah, that's really great. Um, I'm really happy for you. Are you, or are you just... You know, this might work better if you just... What? I mean, of course I am. I know how long you wanted... I was in the front row at your first gig. You were in the only row at my first gig. Yeah, well... And I was in the front row for Midsummer Night's Dream when you played Titania. You remember those flowers you brought me? The bouquet was so big I couldn't even see your face behind them. I was just hoping it wasn't someone creepy. And then I convinced you to ditch the cast party and come wander around with me downtown. Was that the night we broke into the old theater? Oh, I was sure we were going to die going up that fire escape. If I hadn't been totally crazy about you. Were you? Oh, yeah. Because that was before we were even... I know. I thought we might kiss that night, but then... You want to know why we didn't? I, I wanted to try. We were, when we were sitting in the middle of the stage, looking out at all the seats in the darkness, I just wanted to lean over and... Yeah, I, I wanted that too. But then I thought, this is already the best night ever, and I, I, I wanted to save it. I didn't want all the best things at the same time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's... This is not professional of me. I'm... That was just really nice. And no one said anything really nice to me in a while. And now I'm thinking about that night and remembering how I felt like the world was all just going to be ours. I knew it. I was going to be this amazing actress and we were going to be together and, and. Yeah. I just, I miss being the girl who felt like that. I actually would take another coffee, cup of coffee if you're... Uh... Sure. He exits and returns with more coffee. Splash of cream and half a packet of turbinado sugar. Thanks. Duck gets a text. Oh, crap. I, I actually have to go. Oh. We've been trying to get Pufferfish into guest, and his schedule is insane. Apparently he's free right now, so I've got to get to the studio. Do you, do you want me to come? Oh, uh, no, that's, that's nice, but they don't really want people there who aren't. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, sure. We could also meet during the week, if you want. You mean to make up the time? Yeah, or not. We could just, it's been nice to see you. Yeah, uh, I've just, I've got a lot going on, you know, with the album and everything, and then I'm going to be on tour, and then there's just going to be girls. I'm not really in a place to do a thing right now. So what is, I mean, I thought that's why you wanted, and at first it wasn't, I didn't even want to come, but now that we're actually talking, I mean, nobody's ever going to know me like you, not really, 
Nobody's going to remember that girl sitting on stage in a broken down theater, feeling like everything she wanted was hers for the taking. And if nobody knows her, then she's gone. That feeling is gone and I can't- I mean, I, I still wanna see you once a week. We can talk about old times and stuff if, if you want to. Although if you could hold off on the crying, that'd be, I'm sorry if that sounds, I'm just, I'm paying a lot for this time and it's, it's not like it's my job to make you feel better anymore. Why did you hire me? Because I missed you. And I, I guess I wanted to show you that I'm, I mean, this is the version of me you wanted, right? Working hard, making money, buying into this whole thing. And at first when the deal happened, I couldn't wait to tell you. I, I almost called you that first night, but then Steve came home and he wanted to take me out and we got drunk with these girls at the Vienna. And then I almost called you the next day, but then we had a bunch of meetings and I went out the, with the guys from the label and the girls from the night before. And then the day after I had a photo shoot and then Steve and I went to Miami and pretty soon a week had gone by and I didn't really want to call you that much anymore. The thing is, it turns out the version of me you wanted isn't the version that wants you. This version of me wants cashmere sweaters with holes in all the right places. This version of me wants top shelf weed delivered straight to my penthouse apartment. Turns out those things are nice. But you knew that, right? I mean, that's why you decided to leave. That's not. This version of me wants what I want, when I want it. Different girls every night, doing things you'd never. And yeah, this version of me wants to see you, but he wants you to go away afterwards. I don't, I don't want to do this. Not like that. Well, too bad you're in a contract and I'm pretty sure I'm the only thing between you and being out on the street right now. Anyway, I, I've got to go. Pufferfish isn't the kind of person you want to keep waiting. I'll see you next Saturday. Scene 16. Ani alone in her apartment. Hello? Hi, Mom. It's... Me, it's... Ani? Yeah. Ani, where are you? Are you... are you back home? No, no, I'm still in New York. I'm thinking of coming back, though. I'm thinking it might be a big mistake to be here. Duck and I, we broke up, and I haven't been getting cast, and I got this job, this crazy... I've been working for a rental agency, I don't know if you know what that is, but it- I know what that is. You probably think, you probably think it's like being, but it's not, it's, I don't know. At first I thought it was good. I thought I could help people, make people feel better. But now I'm starting to feel like maybe there's something wrong with thinking. I mean, if everything can be replaced, if everyone can be replaced, then we don't try to fix anything. We just throw it away and then, I mean, we can buy everything, right? Anything we want, we can order it on demand. Something breaks and an hour later, a drone comes and brings a new one. And that's great, it's so great, but everything's made of plastic and now the whole ocean's full of plastic we've used. And animals are eating the plastic and they're still hungry. They're starving, even though their guts are full of bags and straws and soda bottles. And if that's what happened when plastic gets thrown away, then what about people? When people get thrown away, what happens then? What do you want me to say? I don't know. 
want you to tell me it's okay. I know you're angry with me. I know you wanted me to stay and help out with the farm and be, I don't know, something different, but I just, I want you to tell me it's going to be okay. We lost the farm. What? After you left, we couldn't, there weren't enough hands. We hired somebody on and we had to take out a loan to pay him, but we figured we'd make it back at the market. But the market's been slow since they opened the new Whole Foods across town. And then we had a flood in September. We never have floods in September. We do now. So the harvest was terrible and we just, we, we couldn't. I didn't know that. Why would you? You never called. I couldn't. You were so mad when I left. And we're living in an apartment now, a one bedroom over the hardware store. I'm cleaning houses and your father's working nights at the sit-go by the highway. He's so tired every morning when he comes home. He was tired after a day in the fields, but it was different. Being outside in the dirt and the sunshine. Now he comes home and he just looks old. So you call and you want me to, to what? To somehow help you? to reassure you, to tell you that everything's gonna be... I don't have that in me, Ani. I'm sorry, but I don't. Other people aren't going to just be there on demand when you need them. I know, but I just... I have to go. No, Mom, please. I have to be at work in a few minutes. Mom, I... I need... Kelly hangs up. Ani stares at her phone for a long time. Then she picks it up and dials another number. Scene 17. The cafe. Jenica sits at a table, waiting. Her hair is combed differently than before. Ani enters. Jenica stands, smiles, extends her arms. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Mom. Jenica enfolds her in an embrace, strokes her hair. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. Don't worry, sweetheart. It's going to be fine. End of play. <laughs>